Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Cooking with Grandma. I hope everybody is well and safe. I mean it's been a little while since I've posted. I have been doing a lot of baking and cooking but I just haven't had a chance to make a video and a lot of the stuff that I've, I'm making um, I've already done on my video so I have to come up with some new stuff. If there's anything you anybody would like to see me make leave it in the comments below so then I can have some new stuff to make. Today what we're going to make is new. This is called apple fritter bread. Now I've had apple fritters and I've had apple crumble. This is the best of both worlds. I have never made this before but it looks good. I've got one in the oven now cooking so I can show you when it's done when we're all finished with it. This is one of those recipes that you have to kind of use a lot of bowls and it's a little bit extra steps but the end result looks yummy. So we're going to get started. The first thing you do is preheat your oven, which it is because I've got one in the oven. And then you want to take a 9 inch um, loaf pan and you want to grease it really well so nothing sticks when you're done. Done that. And it calls for two apples. Now you can use any kind of apples you like. You can use Granny Smith because there's a tart apple in them. When you add the sugar, it makes it nice and sweet. I just have a gala and a golden delicious I believe they are it doesn't really matter so what you want to do is take these and you want to chop them up small and you're you know you want two too big of a pieces pretty much make them all the same I just peel the apple and then I chop off all the sides of it to get it off the core or if you have an apple core you can use that and then cut them and then I just chop them in slices and then chop those so these, I've already done most of them. This is just to show you. I mean, everybody knows how to chop an apple. To these, you're going to put those in a small bowl. And you're going to add, let me get my cutting board out of the way. You're going to add to that two tablespoons of sugar. Granulated sugar, white sugar, not your brown sugar. That comes later. So you're going to put two granulated spoonfuls of sugar and one teaspoon of cinnamon and we're going to give that a mix and we're just going to leave these set aside for now this is what I mean by steps right all right this is the apple so you want to get those prepared it doesn't matter if you do it first or later on down in the recipe um, it makes no difference because either way you got to set them aside so we're going to put those over there and now we're going to start at the beginning of the recipe and we're going to start with again it's another bowl you need a small bowl and to that we're going to add if I can get my recipe back because my it went off and I have to find it again it, I have to reload it which is fine but then I have to scroll around trying to get the actual recipe back again where did it go I'll show you the picture of it when I'm done here. Okay, there we go. And then I'll show you in the oven and see how closely it looks like it. Okay, so we've sprayed our pan or buttered it, whatever, preheated the oven. Now in this small bowl, we're going to mix together brown sugar and cinnamon. So to that we need, um, we need one third cup of brown sugar. That goes in this bowl, and one teaspoon of cinnamon, and in that goes. And we're just going to give this a little mix. This is our topping. So basically, that's it. You want to make sure you don't have any big lumps of brown sugar. So just kind of mix it and kind of give it a little chop on that side with the side of the spoon. You can get in there with your fingers and just break it up if it looks too lumpy. This is not a bad brown sugar so you want it nice and smooth just like that that's what you want to look for little lumps chop them out mix them in so we're going to set this one aside and now we're going to get our big mixing bowl and to that we're going to add we're going to put our butter and our white sugar and it says to beat with an electric mixer which you can but I just use a wooden spoon and it does the job just as well. So we need two thirds cup, two thirds of a cup of white sugar, 
that's going to go in our bowl and one half of a cup of softened margarine or butter if y'all prefer to use butter when you bake or cook that's you know that works i just always buy margarine if butter's on sale i'll buy it but where we live it's really expensive and it tastes good but i really don't find the difference in baking things with or without actual butter all right so look at how quickly that made you know it's time you drag out the mixer and get the heaters and then you know so next as it is we got extra things to wash here so that we don't want to add beaters into the mix so you mix it up till it's nice and smooth it doesn't take long look what 30 seconds maybe there we go get, get that all nice and smooth and to that we're going to add eggs one at a time and then the vanilla so we need two eggs so put one egg in and mix it up good I usually chop up, chop the yolk a little bit before I start mixing because that just helps it incorporate a little faster. Get that guy all nice and mixed in. Again, you can be using your electric mixer to do all this. You know, it's, if you have a stand mixer, that's my goal to get a stand mixer. I need 800 more subscribers so I can start earning money off YouTube and I can buy myself a stand mixer. Oh, a little bit of show. Get that out of there. That happens to the best of us. These are nice farm fresh eggs. My son has a, we have two chickens, like I've mentioned in my other videos. And my son has a farm, and now he started having chickens. He's got a lot of chickens. He gets like a dozen eggs almost every day. So I don't buy eggs anymore. I get between my chickens and his. I have enough to use for baking and for eating. Okay, quick and easy. It's all mixed in nice and smooth. To that, we're going to do is oh i didn't put the vanilla i beg your pardon i'm not done with that yet we have to put a teaspoon and a half i believe one and a half teaspoons of vanilla i usually measure this in the cap because one cap is a this is a big bottle so the cap is two teaspoons but i want one and a half so i'm just going to do it the pop of the actually with the spoon so but that's it for our vanilla. And we're going to mix that in. I like recipes where you can just dump everything in the bowl, mix it up, throw it in the pan, and good to go. But, you know, sometimes taking a little extra step, it doesn't take that much longer, and it just, you know, you have to do what the recipe calls for. Baking is have to be very precise. So to that, we're going to... Combine the flour and the baking powder together with the whisk. Another bowl. So we put, we need one and a half cups of flour and one and three quarters, one and three fourths teaspoon of baking powder. One and three quarters. that away and we're just going to whisk it all together again it doesn't take long just a few seconds you just want to make sure it's real incorporated and real mixed in just give it a good stir and that's it there's your flour and baking powder so we're going to add this slowly to the batter slowly i don't mean like you know standing here going like let it fall in i mean dump some in stir it all around make sure it's all incorporated and you know just a little at a time it's easier to mix it this way than dumping it all all in all at once it makes a fluffier creamier batter when you do just a little at a time I usually do it in about thirds thirds I just one third one third one third kind of have to know how to do math when you bake you have to know fractions half of this quarter of this you know and if you're doubling the recipe then you have to know that one fourth that would make it a half and if you're having a recipe and you have a half a cup then you know it's a fourth of a cup so there we go there's our flour and baking powder and again with the wooden spoon it mixes in just as easy as it would with the beaters maybe a little extra time maybe I don't know 10 seconds 15 seconds more not that we've got all the time in the world nowadays with all this not going out and social distancing and all that icky garbage that's going on we got all kind of time to take time for extra stuff recipes well there we go look at how quick and easy and that is like the creamy creamy cake batter 
So that's like kind of like a cake and apple crisp. You'll see when we put it all together. So now what we're going to do now, we put the mixture in and we start, now we're going to put milk into the batter and it's a half a cup of milk. And when I first read this, I thought, oh man, that's going to make this batter really watery. I was pleasantly surprised that it doesn't. It just makes it creamier than it was when I when I just had the flour. You want to just go kind of slow so you don't splash it all over yourself. Which you know me, the sloppy baker, I usually slop it on the counter. So just get it going, get it stirred in there. Knock it off your spoon. You don't want all that left over on the spoon. And give it a good stir. You want it totally mixed in, no lumps. You want it very, very, very creamy. And there it is. Like it, that may have taken 20 seconds to do, rather than the 10 seconds it would take you with your mixer. There, there you go. Look at, see, it's thinner, but it's not overly thin, and it's very, very creamy looking. Everything's nice and mixed in. There are no lumps. And I'm just going to take a spoon and scrape this off my wooden spoon, just to make sure we get all of that down in there. Now, now we're going to do is put half of the batter into the loaf pan. Now you can measure this out into a measuring cup so you are sure you're only getting half or you can eyeball it. I measured it the first time, just I poured it into a two cup measuring cup and it pretty much filled it up. So if you can eyeball it when you do, you want half then um, by all means go ahead and don't do this step. This is something that I do whenever I try a new recipe. I'm making sure when it calls for half or a quarter, I'm making sure I'm getting the exact right amount because when you're layering something, you don't want one layer to be a lot smaller than the other. So that filled it up so it's a little more than two cups. It's like I'd say two and a fourth of cups. So what we're going to do is pour half of this into our, our pan. So you, know, you put it in there, then you look at your measuring cup and see it should be below the halfway mark and it's not quite. I'm going to put some more in. And there we go. And if you put too much in, it's easy just to scoop it out and put it back into your measuring bowl. Which I'm going to just take a little bit out. I think I think I put a little bit too much. There. Okay. So now you put that in your prepared pan and just spread it out so it's even. There we go. And there. Now to that, that's half of the batter, remember, not all of it. We're going to put half of the apple mixture, which I didn't measure out because you can see that it's how much is in there, and that's easy enough to eyeball. You can just dump half of them and just put them in there. Just like so. Spread them out so they're all throughout the whole batter. And there's half. And we're going to spread them out so they're, you don't want like layers and layers of apple. You want them, there's going to be some on top of each other, that's obvious. But you just want to spread it out. Pat it a little lightly into the batter. And that's the second layer. Just like that, the batter and then the apples. And on top of that, we're going to put half of the brown sugar cinnamon mixture that we made. Again, you can eyeball it or you can measure it. I'm just going to look and see here. I'm sprinkling it a little bit at a time on with a spoon. I find that half of it covers the whole entire surface. And then you've got your half left. So set that down. So there we have that. Okay, now it says to lightly press your apple mixture into the batter. So I'm just taking the back of a spoon and just pushing it down. There, could be easier. This is a very easy recipe, it's just steps. Okay, so we've done that. Now we're going to put the remaining batter over the apple layer. So the remaining batter. And it's so nice and creamy that it just pours out. It's almost like a cake batter, right? So you're getting an apple cake. You're getting a fritter and without the grease, without deep frying it. And you're getting apple crumble kind of all mixed in.
10 to 1. It looks like it's going to be a very yummy dessert. We're just going to very, very gently spread this because you don't want it to mess up your bottom layer there. You just want it to cover it. You don't want to mix it and have your apples and cinnamon sugar kind of showing through because you're going to keep doing this. So there's our second layer of batter. And got apples, let's see. Pour the remaining batter, apples, top of the remaining apple mixture. And again, you just want to spread them out. We want it to cover the whole top of the we want to cover the whole surface. So if you got a bunch of apples all clumped up on top of each other, then and then just the extra batter over there, then you don't have a nice coverage and you get one bite with no apples and one bite with a ton of apples. There we go. And now we're gonna put the rest of the cinnamon sugar over this. You just want a nice coverage all over the whole thing. And there we go. And now here's where it gets fun. Once you get those, then you gotta take your spoon again and pat it down gently. Pat it into the batter just like we did with our first layer. Okay, patting it down. And now we're going to swirl the brown sugar mixture through the apples. So you don't want to go deep, but you want to take a knife and just go in just gently and give it a swirl. You can go up and down like us and then go back and forth. So it's all nice and smooth. You don't want to bring your apples up to the top. So you have to be really careful that you're not going too deep with it. And then just get yourself, look at that. There, that's what you're going for right there. So you put this in the oven and you bake it for 50 to 60 minutes or until it comes clean with a toothpick. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in my oven. And I want to check on the one. Yeah, the one I have in there is going to take a little bit yet. Yeah, it's still got about 20 minutes. Leave that one in there cooking and I will come back and I'll show you what it looks like when it's all done. All right, before I show you the finished product, I want you to see what it looks like on the uh, the recipe that's in my book, or in my tablet here. Let me get that right in there. That's what it's going to, should look like when it comes out of the oven. We'll compare that to when I'm done and see what it looks like. Now, this recipe is a copycat recipe, and it is from lifeinthelofthouse.com. So it's life-in-the-lofthouse.com. Um, I always like to share where I get my recipes from. So although I will put the ingredient list and the how-tos in the description box below, if you ever want to look up recipes, something else from that person, or um, copy it and you don't have the right ingredients, then you know where to go. So life in the loft house. All right, I'll be Okay, I'm back. Our bread is not quite done yet. We got about eight or nine minutes to go, but I thought I would show you in this video as well, I'd add to it, is my version of stuffed chicken. Um, everybody has their own version of stuffing and how they like to prepare their chicken. I'm going to show you my quick and easy way. So I've got about a three, maybe four pound chicken here. The first thing I always do, well I washed it out, I rinsed the, the inside of it out. And I have this cutting board, and it's only for my meats, my poultry. You don't want to be, even though you wash them really good with soap and water, you don't want to be cutting anything else on this that has raw chicken. Now, I wash my hands real good. I've washed the inside and rinsed off the chicken. So now I'm going to pat it dry really, really well, because when I put the butter on it, it will just not stick. It'll slide off all over the place. So you just take a couple of paper towels, and you just... Pat it. You don't want to rub because you'll break the skin. You want that skin on there because it's going to get nice and crispy in the oven. And you want to do all of it, the bottom as well, the wings, the whole bit, because you're going to put rub the butter. You don't want it just on the top. All right, now I'm going to have to get some more paper towels because that was quite a wet chicken after I washed it.
couple of paper towels here. The bottom was still quite wet and a little bit of juice came out of the inside. I didn't drain it all the way, but that's all right. You're going to take your paper towel and just kind of, it doesn't matter too much if the inside is dry because you're going to add stuffing to it anyway. So I just give it a little pat just to get some of that moisture off. Okay, so we're going to leave this guy aside for a second and I'll show you my steps to do after. Oh, let me see, I'm going to put him right here. And I'm going to show you how I make my stuffing. Now, in this saucepan, I have just water and about two tablespoons of butter and one chicken bouillon cube. I'm going to heat that up just long enough for the butter to melt. We don't want it to boil or anything. And in that water and butter mixture, just water. Right here. Goodness, there goes my camera. Oh boy, sorry about that. <laughs> Drop the camera. That's not a good idea. Um, now it's just water and butter and a chicken bouillon cube at the moment. And to that I'm going to add, now you can use any combination of spices you like. This is my favorite. This is what my family likes. And you can change it up all you want. I'm going to use a teaspoon of seasoning salt instead of regular salt just to give it the extra flavor and i'm going to give use a teaspoon of italian seasoning i've tried variations over the years and this is the one that i like the best that i think works the best and my secret ingredient that i most people don't use is i'm going to use a very heaping teaspoon of parmesan cheese just the kind you get in the jar not you don't have to buy real expensive i just use this kind right here like that so we're going to put that in there and we're going to give it a stir just to mix everything up and get that butter chopped up a little bit okay so while that is warming up it won't take long you just put it on your burner on high you just want to incorporate everything and you want to Heat it up only just till the butter is melted. So while the butter is finishing melting, I'm going to very carefully slide my camera back over here where it belongs to get my bowl out to show you the next step. Now the next step in my um, filling, again, stuffing is, you know, you might have your old family favorites, you might have whatever wherever you got your recipe this is how my mom did it and this is what i'm doing you just take normal sliced bread and you just break it up depending on how big your chicken is how many pieces you need to use you want enough to fill up the whole cavity now i have two people in my family that would prefer stuffing out of the bird they don't like it inside it's not you know crispy or it, it, she said my daughter says oh yuck it's touching the inside of the chicken it grows it cooks it doesn't matter but anyway so what I will do is I will stuff the bird and then I put a little bit of the stuffing in a round cake pan just a small little pan and about 10 minutes or so eight or ten minutes before my chicken is done I put that in the oven and it cooks through the bread and the liquid and it gets it nice and crispy that's okay. It's just it's not that big of an ex extra hassle. When my kids were little, I we had the one taste rule. If you I introduced a new food, oh I don't like that. Well you don't know you don't like it until you taste it. You can't go. They say you eat with your eyes, which is true. If something doesn't look appetizing, you're not going to want to try it. But with kids and veggies and stuff, you know they think broccoli, oh cauliflower, no way. Brussels sprouts, uh uh, not having it. But my rule is one taste one spoonful and if you don't like it that's fine move on my um oldest didn't like carrots when she was a baby well, that's fine there are a ton of more vegetables out there besides carrots and that is done i'm going to move that off the stove i almost forgot it was on there for a second and what i do with my vegetable like the brussels sprouts the cauliflower and the broccoli i always make cheese sauce so, you know, everything's better with cheese sauce, right? So if you don't like it plain, but that was my rule, was one, one step. So anyway, she didn't like the stuffing inside the bird, so I made it outside. It's not a big deal. So you get your bread all broken up. 
and you want to cook your chicken you know it's like they say an hour a pound whatever um, you can look it up look up and google it or it'll say sometimes on the package you know when you do it I put it in for a couple hours like this size three hours three uh, it's a th give or take a two three pound bird I do it for a couple hours I baste it a little bit just to get the juices on top and I just put a, a skewer or a fork in stick it in and when the juices run clear it's done so that's a pretty big bowl of bread I think we're gonna use, stop right there for now I'm going to give my liquid a good stir because you want all those spices all mixed in and I'm not pouring all of this in I'm going to do about half because you will make it too soggy and then you, it's like frosting right you put too much milk in and then you have to use more and more powdered sugar so you'd have to use more and more bread because you can see right away when you add the liquid how it goes down because the bread absorbs it all you want it moist but you don't want it soggy so there I'm gonna probably need just a titch maybe not maybe just a titch more just a little and what I do with the extra is I pour it over top of the chicken and then that adds instead of putting water in the bottom of your roasting pan I uh, I poured the chicken I poured over the chicken so it bakes with a little extra flavor so there we go stuffing done super easy I'm gonna just move this stuff over here I'm gonna bring back mr. chicken and show you now the next step now the first thing you do is stuff it I one time buttered it first put all the butter on top and then you're holding up a chicken and putting the stuffing in and it's a little slippery so we're going to take this guy and stand him up, make sure it's all open nice. Now you can use your hands and you can push the stuffing in. I'm just going to spoon it in. Some people think, ew, gross, using your hands, touching raw chicken. Well, A, you've washed your hands before you start, and B, you're going to wash your hands real good after you're finished. So there's nothing wrong with using your hands while you're cooking or baking. I haven't had any comments saying, oh my gosh, you've touched that, you know. I'm surprised that I haven't, but at the same time, a lot of cooks do that. So I just take my hands and push it so I want it packed in there real tight. There, it's all filled up. It's in there real tight. If you push on it and it oozes up back out again, you know it's filled up right. So then you can take it and you can tie up your legs. I'll do that after. And that just keeps everything in. So the next step is that I take some butter, just regular margarine. I do use my hands for this because I tried a knife and it just it smeared it. It didn't really butter it. And I cover the whole guy up here with butter. The legs, the wings, and you might want to, if it's a big chicken and you're cooking it for a long time, you do want to cover the wing tips with um, a little bit of foil. You see how that's kind of just walking, moving right off the chicken there on the bottom, so it wasn't quite dry enough. I'm just going to give this a little more of a pat. It was just sliding right off. It wasn't staying on. You want to cover up your wing tips with a little bit of foil, as I was saying, because otherwise they'll probably get cooked quicker and burn um, before your chicken's done. Now I'm just going to wash my hands for a minute before we start on my on our next step here. So my oven timer is beeping at me so I need to check on our bread for a second see how that looks. Okay. I'm going to try the toothpick test. It says to tick a toothpick in it to see if it's done so let me check. And it's got about five minutes to go by the looks of that. So stick it back in here, finish getting our chicken ready, and that'll be ready to show you. So now you've got it buttered, you've got it stuffed. I am going to get my tin foil out and wrap up my wing tips. Some people cut the wing tips off if you don't like them. My husband happens to like them, so I just go ahead and um, leave them on. Just take, all you do is lift it up and just wrap up just the tips. You don't want the wings covered. You want them to cook nice, but just the very tips. And again, you can always just cut these guys right off. There's nothing on them. I don't know why he likes them, but they get crunchy and crispy, so he likes them. 
So there we go. Covered those guys up. That way. And I've got my roasting pan ready. You just put a layer of, of tin foil in the bottom. Saves a whole world of cleanup. Take your chicky chick and turn them back over. You want it breast side up. Get my string. actual baker's twine there is things out there or just go to the dollar store and buy a roll of string it doesn't matter because you know you're not going to eat it and you take it and you put it let's see this is show here um you put it up under the legs like this around the, the bony part the end part turn it and go around once this way and well that slipped right off around just switch it right around again so you've got like a good loop going on there. Give it a pull so they're nice and tight. And then just tie it in a little knot, a little bow, whatever you want. It doesn't matter because you're going to cut it off when it's done. This just helps keep the legs together because they will separate. They'll spread out when they're cooked and it keeps the stuffing in. That's it. That's my version of stuffed chicken. So to that, I'm going to take our mixture that I do the butter and the spice mix and I'm pouring that all over my chicken put it spread it give it all those nice spices and that cheese now it dropped down up obviously to the bottom of the pan and that's good because you want liquid in there now um, you can put the top of the roasting pan back on or you can cover it with foil whichever method you prefer. I like to cover it with foil because the last 10 minutes or so of baking, I uncover it and it helps get the skin nice and crispy. Don't put it on tight, just like a little tent, so the air can get through and it, it gets nice and... Now I'm not going to show you the results of this because everybody knows what fried, uh, baked chicken looks like. You know, this is just to give you an idea of what my stuffing is like and how I prepare chicken for stuffing. This is our supper for tonight with apple fritter cake for dessert, which I'm going to show you in just a minute. Okay, now I'm back with our finished cake, and as you see how nicely it swirled, it looks very nice. It's all, you know, not just plain on top. If you remember what the picture looked like before, watch the video, and it pretty much, pretty much the same. It's got the white showing through, the batter showing through. So I'm going to set this one aside so it can cool. And with the one I baked previously, it didn't have quite as much swirl effect, but it still looks good. And I'm going to put a slice of it on the plate to see what it looks like in the middle. The first piece is always the hardest to get out of the pan. It doesn't stick, hopefully, because I did grease the pan really, really well. So let's see if I can slide that out. Here it comes. It's still a little warm. Still a lot warm. <laughs> so, okay, that looks pretty good. Get that, get a piece more in the middle so you can see the filling, how nicely it looks. This would be nice with a glass of milk, a cup of tea or coffee. You know, the spoonful of ice cream on the side would be lovely with it. So I'm going to put you back in here, and I'm going to show this to you. So that's what it looks like, and the inside, when it's all nicely baked, you can see all the layers of the apple and the cinnamon and the batter. So I hope you all enjoyed today's show and our video. And I hope you will try these recipes. Let me know in the comments below if you've tried them. I think you might try them. And if you have anything that you'd like to see me bake, whether it's sweet or savory, it doesn't matter. I will do it. I did sex in a pan pudding cake with one, when one of my viewers requested it. And I got all the ingredients and I made it. You can go scroll back down my, through my videos and find that one. Um, it was delicious, by the way. Very, very decadent. Very, very sweet. But very, very good. So I hope you all are staying safe, staying home, staying well, 
and enjoy your time together as a family if you can and get together baking have your kids help you in the kitchen my grandsons love helping me in the kitchen i measure out the ingredients and i let them put in the bowl one takes turns stirring one adds the eggs they have a riot they're five and seven or five and nine sorry he just turned eight eight sorry tater i'm sorry need a potato if i'm getting your age wrong because you know grandma's getting a little she just forgot because we couldn't have his birthday party this year in march it was right when all this madness started so he still gets a birthday party when he comes over again whenever that happens so there it is there's our apple fritter cake it's the best of apple cake apple fritters that you deep fry and fruit um, apple crumble so it's the best of both worlds and we did our chicken and now this is what the stuffing looks like i just that i put out of the bird i cook it in my little round cake pan you don't have to grease it or anything it's not going to be in the oven that long it won't stick but this will all get crispy and hard and crunchy and that's the way my oldest daughter likes it so put that in the oven about 10 minutes before your chicken is done so that's it for today have every, everybody have a really super great sweet tooth day or not there's a lot of my recipes that are not sweet too 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 sweet so look back on the recipes I know you all are viewing the recipes and if you all could please hit the like button so I can tell if you're enjoying my recipes or not. I don't know if just by watching them if you like them if you don't hit that button. So hit the like button, ring the bell so you know when I'm in my kitchen to get cooking for you all again and leave a comment and what you think about the recipes and what you'd like me to do make in the future. So have a good day everybody. Bye now.